Hey, once again, uh, time to probably update you a little bit because uh, right around the world, people are um, having problems thinking that their rights are being stripped from them. And there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of um, hurt, anguish and anger going on uh, because people don't know their rights. So let's see if we can help you so that you don't end up here or here. If, if you know these simple things, then you're not going to have, uh, not have to worry so much. Okay, because everything is about contract. Now, if I was to go through and explain uh, everything in contract, it would take over two years. And even then, there would still be parts that haven't been covered. So just know that there are several basic things that can help you uh, in your day-to-day -day life without having to worry so much. Now, if everything is about contract, what is a contract? But they come in all shapes and sizes. Some are verbal, some written, some are formal, some informal. But they all have three features in common. You make someone an offer or someone makes you an offer. Two, they accept it or you accept it. Three, you promise to give something, usually money in return for what you're getting. The legal term for this promise is consideration or deposit, whatever you want to call it. But those are the three generally accepted facts that make a contract. Now, it's between um, uh, a willing seller and, a, and an informed buyer, uh, if you're talking about real estate. But what we'll be talking about mainly is... Uh, side of the road contracts and uh, things that you don't realize are happening in your day-to-day -day life. Corporations and their enforcement agents use contract law as a means of entrapment and we don't even realize that uh, what is happening. So if you understand the laws of contract, we can avoid the consequences of these unwanted contracts, which we'll go into shortly. This is the most important part. Whenever a corporation agent or an enforcement agent tries to engage us, just realize it is only an offer to contract. It's uh, when they say you were speeding, that's an offer to contract. And it's how we react to that offer that either forms a contract or doesn't form a contract. So we're going to show you the little tricks that constitute getting a contract into place or not. Once a contract is agreed to, then a trust is formed. And this is this is the tricky part that most people don't realize is that once a trust is formed, the trustees are under obligation not to disclose anything that is in that trust. That's the idea of a trust. Now, the rules of contract are so simple you'll kick yourself never argue this is dishonorable okay so the moment you get pulled up and uh, you say, you were speeding no i wasn't bang argument automatically you are in contract for being dishonorable it's that simple whenever anyone calls you on the phone and offers you a contract never argue Two, never agree. If you agree, then there's a contract formed. Never go silent. Silence is a sign of yes or acquiescence. So you're agreeing to it by your silence. So never go silent. Always ask questions. So if you ask a question uh, of the officer uh, or the uh, enforcement agency that's trying to get you into contract, ask them a question, and when they respond, ask another question, because they have three times to form a contract. So if you ask three questions, then they have no, no further, they cannot go further with that contract, but they can change the subject. So if you got pulled up for, say, um, speeding, 
and you ask three questions. Uh, the most common one is, uh, have I been detained? Um, because if you've been detained, the officer must read you your rights. So the first right that they will say is you have the right to remain silent. So, oh, great, I'll go silent. But anyway, after you've asked uh, three questions, then they could switch to see if your registration or your insurance or something like that. Um, they could change the subject and have another three shots, but they only have three times. And you'll find that if you're very polite and very uh, cooperative with them by asking questions, they will normally give up and let you go on your way. Now, these points, you must remember that God created man. Man created corporations, and that's the order. So man, uh, sorry, corporations uh, try to believe that they're God, and they... Uh, think they can override man, but that's not the case because man lives under God's law and cor corporations created statute and they must abide by them. So just remember that statute created by a private company is the company rules, so they must abide by them. And if you ask them the question, and this is all we're going to be learning in this uh, presentation, is asking questions. So if you ask them, are you bound by statutes? Do you have to uphold statutes? They must answer yes. And we'll show you shortly um, how you can really hold them to account. Right here, in fact. If you go to the police website, the police website's up there in whatever country you're in. If you go to your um, enforcement agency's websites, you will find something like this. Policing by consent, to have the trust and confidence of all. So if you ask that question, or if you uh, take a copy of this off their website and have it laminated and keep, keep it with you at all times, you say um, on your website it says that you police by consent. Is that correct? If they try to dispute it, say, well, look here, I have a copy just just in case you uh, didn't realize. Now, they must abide by statute. They are held accountable by the statute, and the courts will enforce that. So probably a good idea if you uh, go on to all your different enforcement agency websites, and you will see that they all police by consent. Now, if you don't know your rights, then you've definitely got none. So if you know that everything is by consent and you know contract law, you have nothing to fear about anything, which at the moment they're, they're enforcing this fear right around the world and you don't have to be in fear. But this is what they will use. They will use force and fear to get your consent. Now, Another one of your rights is that anything, if they say we will arrest you or we will cut your power off, we will do this, we will do that, all you have to ask, and once again I'm teaching you to ask questions, if that is a threat, you're using force and threat to get me to consent, what does that do to the contract? Now, if you ask that question, they must answer that any threat or force nullifies the contract. So they cannot get your consent by force or fear. So learning your rights is going to help you. If anyone offers us anything, we also have the right to full disclosure. So once again, ask them. Ask them, do I have the right to full disclosure? Okay, so hopefully these few little tips on contract law will help you in your day-to-day -day life and you will get out of that fear regime that they keep trying to hold us in. All the best on your journey.